Oh, Fort McMurray and the rest of the world. My name is Elliot Pierre. You're tuning into the Max City Morning Show. Once again, we're going to start this off like we start every episode off with gratitude. It blows my mind how many of you were t- tuning in continuously and for the first time. So it warms my heart. So I just want to say thank you because I know you could be doing a million other things with your time. Now, on that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How's she caught me, loves? You're listening to the Max City Morning Show. All right. Now we got a we got a really fun guest here today. Local business owner, a cool business. I've uh, spent some time there. Definitely a hit with uh, the ladies. So for all the gentlemen out there, if you want to uh, wow your mom, your significant other, a daughter or something, this uh, this is where you got to go. So as everybody knows at this point, I do not introduce my guests. They can do a better job at that than I ever will be able to. So on that note, can you please introduce yourself and tell people who you are? Well, I'm Amy. I'm the owner of Color Me Mine, which is a paint-your-own-pottery studio. Cool. And that's here in Fort Mac? It's here in Fort McMurray. And where is it located? And we're located in Eagle Ridge, right beside uh, Tim's. Okay, cool. Now, I've been there many times. I think it's cool. Um, How did you get into this business? Um, Well, uh, so back in 2016, we had a little fire, and uh, everyone evacuated, and uh, we ended up in Edmonton staying with my parents, and uh, we had a birthday coming up. I believe it was my mom's birthday coming up, and we were walking through West Edmonton Mall, and we saw this little store called Color Me Mine. It's a franchise, so we went in, and we decided to paint something for uh, my mom for her birthday, and also uh, paint something for my daughter. Um, as an activity. So we were in there and as I was sitting in there, the wheel started turning a little bit and thinking, wouldn't this be so great to have this in Fort McMurray? Mm. Uh, There's not a lot of artistic activities that you could just drop in. You usually have to be part of a, 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 um, either part of a class or part of a a membership type deal. A guild, guild, yes, that's what I was looking for. Um, (laughs) There you go. So for for me to open up something like this, it was more so to have uh, bring something to the kids, to the parents to have an activity that's not just the kids running around, you know, having them sit down at the table and, you know, having an artistic experience. Okay, very cool. So the fire was kind of the... The starting point. Yeah, it was kind of the catalyst that kind of... I've, I've seen Color Me Mine before. They, they're they really good at posting, like, when celebrities come in and, and paint. It's a, it's a U.S.-based franchise. Okay. Um, so I saw that, and I was always kind of jealous, wishing we could have something like that here. And then, yeah, the opportunity came up, and I thought it was a great idea. And, yeah, I, I think people really appreciate us being here. Yeah, no doubt. And so when when... When did you open exactly? In what year? Uh, we opened in 2017. Okay, wow. Yeah, so we're going on our fourth year. That's we've awesome. actually are hitting our actual four year anniversary of being open on Wednesday. Okay. So that's when we first opened our doors to people coming in and painting. Obviously, you've got to build up the business and put it together before you open. Right. Um, and prepare for it, right? Right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And so during. So, oh, go. So, It is, yeah, this Wednesday, and uh, I, I kind of feel like I'm not doing anything so far, for, so far for it because I feel like it's a little bit of a jinx to do stuff before your five year. Do you know what I mean? Yep. When they say you hit your fifth year in business, that's the year that you know you've you survived. Right. Right. Well. We'll still, see. Still impressive. I might change my mind. We'll yeah, see. we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if uh, you made it through 2020. Yeah, doing pretty good yeah. as a business at yeah. this point. It's, it's been an, an interesting adventure starting from uh, after post-fire to pandemic to flooding. And let's not forget economic downturn. Correct. Um, but, you know, it's, it's you have to really believe in what you're doing. And I really like it like makes me so excited but not just the kids. They're, like, excited to be there. Like, what job do you have that people are excited to come in and paint that little unicorn that they've been staring at every time they come in and out? And mom said, yes, 
you can paint that fluffy unicorn the next time we come. Like, kids are so excited. And the parents, like, they say how nice it is to sit down and just relax and paint. That's it. Yeah. And it's something different. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, Yeah, it's definitely different. Elliot would let me paint unicorns if I wanted to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, me as somebody who is not the most um, talented when it comes to painting, drawing, I just don't have a knack for it. I've been in there a bunch of times, maybe as like a, a business outing or my family's been there during Christmas. It's been like an event that we've done. Um, I've done it for the boys and no, not boys and girls club for um, the food bank. Food bank. Yeah. Right. And so I've been there tons of time. And for somebody who honestly, the first time I was told I was doing it, I'm like, oh, man, because <laughs> I'm not talented at it. I don't like to do things I'm not good at like most yeah. people. I've had a ball every time. Yeah. It's so relaxing. And like there's no TV. That's mm-hmm. my favorite. No TV. And because you're painting, you can't touch your phone. Mm-hmm. So you're literally just focused on that and the people you're with. And it's, it's a great, a great thing to do individually or with a group. For sure. For sure. Like, it, it's funny how a lot of people do come in. Like, I, I find usually the, the man is like, oh, we're going to be doing this. And uh, uh, they sit there. They watch the mom paint. They watch the kids paint, and all of a sudden they're grabbing a mug, mm. they're, or they're grabbing the Spider-Man bank, and they're starting it. And like right. they have so much fun. They and then they think, okay, this would be such a great night to have a date night. Yeah, yeah, they get into it. You, you get into it, and it's not. It's you really don't have to be a talented painter to do it. That's if you right. follow our rules and we explain everything to you, you're not going in there and starting from scratch and not knowing nothing. We help you along the way. Um, and we give you tips and tricks, um, like you can, and there's items too that have details on them that you can just follow. That's right. Or you could just paint your mug like black. Yeah. That's yeah. It. And then just put love you mom. Yeah. Love you mom, a big heart on there. Like you don't have to go crazy. Yeah. Just the act of itself of painting is very like soothing and like you kind of get lost yeah. In, um, you know, the, the painting process That's in right. your mind, right? Well, I can't tell you how many brownie points I've received <laughs> from going in and making something from mm-hmm. the ladies in my life. So mm-hmm. for all the fellas at home, I said it at the top of the show, and I'm being 100% serious. Like, if you have a significant other or a daughter or a mom mm-hmm. or, like, a mother-in-law, anybody, mm-hmm. any lady in your life, and you're just like, what should I get? They're so hard to buy. Buy for, listen, go in, paint something, and give it to them. And even if it looks like trash, because sometimes mine look horrible, <laughs> um, they're going to love it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. built-in brownie points. Or maybe you just want to go for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Or just, maybe, yeah. There you go. We got a lot of a lot of men coming in on their own. They come like during the week, um, sitting down and working on a really big project. Right. Like art isn't just for women and kids. No. It's for everybody. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I, I've told a bunch of my buddies about it. And they like typical men, site workers. Like, I'm not doing that. But <laughs> yeah. anyways, I'll, I've dragged some in or I, some of them have gone on date nights and stuff. And it's exactly how you describe it. They go there and like, uh, and then all of a sudden they like hijack the whole day. And now they, they become artists. So. It's, it's funny how you say like, uh, like site men. It's like I've gone, been going out to, uh, not recently, mind you, but like been going out to, out at site, uh, Conoco Phillips. And usually it's a, big chunk of ladies that are painting like as an activity mm. and then slowly the men come and they check it out because we're usually like in the cafeteria or something some big open space right and they're like can i join in i'm like of mm. course like of course, yeah. as long as they say you can yeah and we're starting to have like a big uh man following that's awesome and that's it's so great good. like it, and uh it really is relaxing yeah it is a good experience right yeah for sure now, we were talking about something before you uh, came in in regards to growing up. Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up here. I was born and raised here. So I'm a Fort McMurrayite. I'm yeah. a unicorn. There you go. Aren't Just like you myself a unicorn? and Tanner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're everybody here. Like, listen, this show, the more people that come on, we've had more people. I don't even want to call us unicorns anymore. Yeah. We've had more people born and raised in Fort McMurray on the show than people from abroad. Right. So. Right. What school did you go to? I went to Westwood. Oh, got another <laughs> Westwood person here, Tanner. Another uh, one. Another one? Yeah. Yeah. Are you Merck? I'm Merck. Yeah. And he's calm. Ooh. Oh, See? try high. <laughs> uh, well, we were talking like 
I'm not going to give anybody's age away here. No. Um, <laughs> but when I went to high school, they stopped the try high dance in regards to they still called it to try high, but comp was no longer invited. Oh, no. <laughs> so some things went down the year that I was in grade nine and they said, yeah, comp's not coming anymore. So they oh, no. still called it to try high, but no comp. <laughs> so comp does, at least when I went there, I came from an elementary school that like every elementary school did dances. And then we got to comp and it was just kind of mutually decided that we weren't going to do that anymore because nobody was going to show up. And like a bunch of the kids from like certain elementary schools tried to get together and be like, hey, let's throw dances. And like they did like this whole petition thing. And everybody was like, yeah, no, we don't do dances at comp. <laughs> Yeah. Not our thing. Not their thing. They yeah. Don't dance yeah. At comp. <laughs> I, yeah. I remember Try High. So it must have been, I must be a little bit older than you because I don't remember that going down. Yeah. Um, you graduated with my cousins, Justin and I, Erica, I, right? Yeah. I think maybe we're, yeah, me and Erica would, yeah. would have been the same year. So you graduated when I was in grade nine. Yeah. So. Yeah. I passed. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can say it. I, I graduated 2000. I'm not ashamed of my age. Like, no. that's not a high age. You graduated in 2000? Ago. That can't be wrong. The math has got to be wrong there. Why? Well, what we, what I graduated year? in 2001. Well, it could be that Erica's a little bit older than me. Hmm. Maybe. I always thought she was. You get to a certain age where you think everybody's, everybody's the your same age. Everybody's like, the same. Yeah. Yeah. Erica must, Erica's older than you then. Yeah. Then she's older than me. Yeah. Sorry, Erica. Putting you on blast. <laughs> yeah. They got rid of try highs. Maybe. Yeah. It was a uh, comp. So before Merck, where did you go then? If you went to Westwood? Um. So I'm actually French. So I went to the Francophone school, Ecole Boreal, which is uh, uh, a fully French school. So you know how... You guys would learn French for like an hour. Yeah. I would learn English for an hour. So just oh. the basics. Um, my mom's from Quebec and my dad grew up in Quebec, but he's from Edmonton. So they both are the reasons why I was born, born here. So right. back in the 80s, they came up um, and started, my dad started working at Syncrude. Back in the day when Syncrude and Suncor were like, the kids were like, you. Your dad works at Suncor. My dad works at Syncrude. Like yeah. the competition, hey? Yeah. yeah. And they're the exact same. Always yeah, were. Exact but it same. was Syncrude versus Suncor. Yeah. It's not the same. The one your dad went to was better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Syncrude was better. My dad worked at Syncrude. That, yeah. that is fact. Yeah. Syncrude was the best. They used to have Syncrude barbecues for everybody watching at home. They were the best. Oh, yeah. They used to give you fanny packs, which my parents still have. <laughs> the or mugs. Like, the mugs are those. I don't want to say horrible because I still wear them at home. But the Syncrude barbecue t-shirts that were yeah. like a fluorescent color of some sort. <laughs> yeah. And then they also had like the uh, Syncrude lobster boil. Oh, the lobster boil. Yeah. I miss those things. Yeah. Like, those were nice. Those are fun. It was like a different era back in the, like, 1990s, early 2000s of, of like, Syncrud and Suncor. Yeah. Well, nobody really knew about Fort McMurray. I remember growing up and, like, it wasn't until Jean Chrétien came. Yeah. And, like, 1999. Yeah. The Canadian government said, hey, we're going to invest X amount of billions. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it was like, It blew boom. up. Yeah. It was crazy, hey? Yeah. But prior to that, like, it was, like, nothing changed. Like, yeah. it just, everybody kind of just stayed, p parents worked, but, like, there wasn't a boom. Yeah. There's actually, we were talking about it before, and Tanner mentioned it as well, there was a number of oil crashes leading up until then. So people mm -hmm. who were like, oh, this is so rough, it's never happened in Fort McMurray before. It's like, if you grew up here, you remember this has happened before. Yeah, it's, it, the 80s were a hard time. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember it as much because I was super young then, but yeah. uh, we've been through this before, and it it will pick up again. Yeah, it's the way it's just the cycle, right? Yeah, of the boom and bust, and like unfortunately with oil, it's not like a consistent thing. Yeah, it was for a really long time, which was you know great for this community and how much it added to like different venues like uh, uh, Mac Island. Right creating like a better venue for families to go and, you know, spend time together, different activities, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The community developed big time because of that stretch of well over a decade of high mm -hmm. oil prices. But yeah, it'll come back. We're still here. I yeah. love it. I ain't going anywhere. Yeah. So 
this is part of the show, though, where it's called the Max City Minute. Okay. I don't know if you've seen the show, but uh, Tanner's going to ask you some questions. All Five. Right. I don't know what he's going to ask you. <laughs> so best of luck. Tanner, hit her with the Max City Minute. Question number one. What is something you see in Fort McMurray that makes you feel nostalgic? I don't know if it's like seeing it but it's so weird uh uh when it rains there's a smell you smell the rain and that's I, some people might think that's kind of gross but for me it's like i can smell the rain coming question number two what is your favorite part of working with art in Fort mcmurray oh man there's such a great art community here um and like each artist is so supportive of each other it's great and, and it's from like comedy to like uh aboriginal art to like even the pottery guild like everyone's so supportive of each other i love it question number three what is one service you offer that people might not know um well we do a lot of baby prints like baby hands baby feet and we kind of amass like a a little bit of a following because we do like back in october we do baby bums baby handprints we're doing like spring and easter prints here soon so that's one thing that people don't know when they think about ceramics Hmm. question number four what is one thing you've learned from your business that you use in life wow um this this whole year uh, pivot it's like don't let the hard stuff keep you still you got to keep moving don't keep moving like things that stay in motion or in motion stay in motion things that are still stay still so you just got to keep pivoting got keep moving forward like just when you think you're almost done you're like probably only halfway there so you got to keep pushing and your last question what is your favorite part of running your business in the town you grew up in Uh, i would say like the kids they cut like like i said before the kids they come in the excitement, like not only when they, they're painting, but when they pick up their pieces and they see it, oh, it's just such a good feeling. Those have been your five questions. There you go. You're number four, super inspirational <laughs> in regards to keep it moving. Like that was mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Good response. Now, in regards to something you were talking about before, you went to a totally French school. Are you doing that with your children? Um, I tried and it's, my mom's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> um, if you don't speak Sorry, enough mom. French at home, it's really hard to translate that into school. And like we had the setup, my husband's completely English. Mm. So, and I kind of, um, I would say English was my first language because my mom came here, did not know a lick of English. So she learned um, by soap operas, her English. So she would always try to speak English to me to practice her English. Right. So for me, my first thought is to speak English to her. Right. Um, but yeah, my children, they know French. They understand it, but they don't, we don't practice it enough. Yeah. Ooh, you're in trouble. I know I'm so much trouble. Yeah. 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 I grew up English, struggling with French Mm -hmm. and you live vicariously through your kids. Mm -hmm. So my little boy, Keegan, um, from the get go, when he was one years old and he went into a day home, we put him into not a French immersion day home, just a straight up French day home from the get go. And so he was going there. He's like, I don't don't know what anybody's saying. Like you're about to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so now he is a bit older and he's in French immersion and oh, so, like, you. my game plan is, like, you're going to learn something your dad doesn't know, basically. Yeah. I think it's it a huge benefit. so many doors. So many. Like, so, he's a teenager. He's going to be yelling at you in French, and you're not going to be able oh to do it. Though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he already talks trash to me in French, and I have no idea what he's saying. I'm like, what did you say? And he's just like, nothing, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, I know, like, I don't know what you're saying, but I see your face, they, and you're grounded. <laughs> so that's how the kids are, right? Like, you think when you're learning a new language, like, uh, like, you have a friend that speaks another language the first thing you ask them yeah. what do you ask them right what are the swear words right? yeah that's it and so that's like it. that's what kids do they like learn the swear words so like yeah, you definitely not adult. yeah <laughs> it's definitely not me learning yes, swear words fair enough fair enough i love his inflections on words like yes. i will say what 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 did you, what did you say and he'll say what did you say and he just like but that's how he learned to say what 
did instead of, and so it's a beautiful way of like i didn't hear you mm -hmm. like can you say that again that's how i would say it. what did you say i'm like oh please never stop saying it like yeah. that my daughter she went through the most french she would always say baguette baguette mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah like i love it's cute hey it's so baguette, cute the little accent when yeah. they're speaking english yeah yeah so yeah it's a it's a skill and a talent to have but it's a it's a tough one you have to be committed and um i maybe in a sense i, I wouldn't say I, I was lazy by any means but you it, it's easy for me mm -hmm. so you think it's easy for them right but it's not it's like anything you have to learn it right, right. and you have to be consistent with yeah. it so. and you were kind of immersed in it and them not so much yeah. but it, hey listen if they can still have a somewhat conversation with yeah. grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. then you're all good mm -hmm. better than nothing yeah exactly so on that note though that was 20 minutes Ooh, we're done so quick. there you go so before you go though uh this is uh the time of the show where you can get a shameless plug-in please do tell people once again about your business where it is how they can get in contact with you and how they can support so uh we're doing to goes and obviously we do painting of pottery um we're here to like entertain you guys you can come in store uh, and paint now um you could take things for home uh if you want to purchase anything to go or see what stock we have you can go to fortmcmurray.colormemind.com and look for the little shopping cart and that'll take you to our online website um you can come in the store as well and pick see what we have um but we are we have to unfortunately stick to ahs regulations so yeah um Come in, stop by, check out what we do. And uh, we're here to entertain families on the weekend or throughout the week. There we go. Very cool. Awesome. Well, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. It really does mean the world to me. On that note, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I just died at this. That's another Max City Morning Show done. Talk about quenching your ugly thirst.